Hi, and welcome to Pizza Talk. I'm Peter Reinhardt. Pizza Talk is presented by Pizza Quest. And uh, it's interesting because the very first episodes, the webisodes that we ran on Pizza Quest when we launched it 10 years ago were with Nancy Silverton when she just shortly after it had opened Pizzeria Moza. So Nancy is with us today. It's great to see you again, Nancy, and thanks for joining us. And I think we're just nice to see you. Yeah, let's catch up today. I wish we were sitting face to face at Pizzeria Moza, but believe me, me too. <laughs> we're doing the next best thing. <laughs> it was one of my favorite stops on the whole journey, <laughs> and uh, and I know a lot has happened since then. And that's what we'll, we'll, maybe we'll spend a little time on on this uh, first segment with you, uh, talking about you know everything that's happened from then till now because you've opened some new places. I, I think that uh, when we were there, you hadn't opened Key Spaca, which is uh, the, the new concept that's around the corner, which is also what to go pizza to go, but also a restaurant right. at night. Yes. Uh, so is, what kind of restaurant is it at night? So at night, um, you know, it's one of those hard to define restaurants. When we first opened it, we thought of it as a butcher friendly restaurant because we were doing a lot of butchering, um, which we still do. But it was sort of a term that I feel got um, not only over uh, overused, but it also didn't capture what we really are because we have so many wonderful salads and vegetables as well. So I don't know, it's not an Osteria in the sense that um, most of the food is meant to be shared because it's larger format, um, which is not the case at the Osteria. We don't have any pastas. It's not a, a pizzeria because we don't have pizza at Kispaka in the dining room. We do have something called Focaccia di Recco. I don't know if you no, I love focaccia di Recco. We'll talk oh, about that a little bit. We've never had. Yeah. I wrote about it in uh, in my first uh, pizza book, American Pie, and it was. Oh wow! It was, like, it was a highlight. I went to I went to Recco, and I got to you know to have it there, and I wrote about it. But uh, I, you never see it in the United States. I didn't know you were serving it. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, let me just finish a little bit about that corner, and yeah. then I'll come back to Recco if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. The the third restaurant that we're talking about started out as a. Uh, a oh, sorry the space started out as a pizzeria to go you know we had so much interest in um in people wanting to take out our pizza at the pizzeria but during prime hours we couldn't accommodate our oven wasn't big enough to accommodate it right. so space became available next uh, two doors down we took it over to do pizza to go so there's most of our pizzas a few of our salads a couple of our anapasti lasagna very simple things but in that space, which was, it's quite large, we also ended up putting a small restaurant, which is called Kispaka, which the translation of is the person that cleaves, so the butcher. So uh, we used to describe it as a butcher-friendly restaurant, but it's much more than that, because we have wonderful vegetables, great salads, things like that, but it's a tiny 40-seat restaurant that's open only at night. So like the, the butcher aspect of it is, uh meat meat based dishes obviously that are not not something you wouldn't find at at Osteria Spaco uh, Osteria. larger format so like tomahawk uh uh you know tomahawk pork and yeah. uh, bistecca fiorentina and large uh bone marrow pies so most of it is sh is meant to be shared so it's much more a um a shared format than say an individually plated like the Osteria so kind of it's Casual, casual and fun. It is casual. There's no, you know, tablecloths, but it's not, um, but it's still, um, it's not a cheap restaurant, I, I have to say, but, um, but, you know, I try to, in each restaurant, um, I, I, I found it very important to have that one, I want to come back dish, right? And at Key Spaka, that comeback dish is a focaccio di Recco. And, um, and I love the fact that you know it because most people I have to describe it to, and I will describe it because most people don't know and are very surprised by it. Um, so uh, in putting together uh, Kispaka and wanting to do something, I thought about doing a focaccia. I thought I was going to be doing the more traditional yeasted, say Genovese style right. that we all know. Yeah. And uh, one of my partners, had suggested I go 
to Recco, which was the focaccia capital of the world. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go there. Uh, as I go to Italy twice a year. So on that next trip, I planned, I, I rented a place in Genoa because it's in Liguria. And I went out to Recco. Now, first of all, <clears throat> you've been there. I've been there. Recco was probably one of the uglier cities in Italy, right? Let's say it's not. You don't go there for any other reason than to have focaccia di Recco. Or they call it focaccia col formaggi there, so cheese focaccia. And, and and I think what made it so ugly was that it had gotten bombed a lot during the war. Yeah, it was it's still true. 40, 50, 60 years later, still being rebuilt. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's why. Um, <clears throat> so I went to the local bakery, and I and I ordered a uh, well, it wasn't a slice; it was like a square, and it was very thin, and it was filled with a cheese. And I thought that's okay. But it was cold and it had been made, you know, earlier on. And, and I kind of left it at that. And I went on for lunch that day, not in, in, in Recco, um, in Portofino, I think. And I had to be chatting with a waiter. And, I, and they said, why are you here? And I said, I came here to try focaccia di Recco. I came to the region. And they, and they said to me, have you been to Manuelina? Which is a restaurant there that claims to have started, you know, have, have, have been the inventors of focaccia <laughs> of course i went there on my uh, way back to the hotel and there i had a true focaccio uh direco which was life-changing right. so especially it's, when you have it right out of the oven it's you know, yeah it's, it has it's to be like in the oven. no but it's super thin there's no yeast it's made with flour olive oil flour olive oil what am I missing? It doesn't even have salt. I don't know. Water, flour, water, and olive oil. And, uh, well, yeah, it doesn't have salt because you salt it afterwards. Uh, yeah. You stretch it as thinly as you would stretch a uh, strudel. Yeah, it's like phyllo dough or strudel. Yeah. And then it's, you, you just blob in um, strachino cheese, which um, is, we know it more as maybe a Crescenza cheese. It's a fresh cheese, um, a fresh cow's mouth cheese, it's aged just a bit, and that's the tricky part of being able to um, make it at home, although I have a very, very um, detailed recipe in my new book, Keys Faka, that was supposed to come out in February, which we've told to fall, but it's completely in there. And you can, you know, if you, if you Google um, Manuelina Restaurant, there's a whole YouTube of them making it, and it's something you want to see. And it's baked in these copper pans that actually come from, um, uh, not from uh, Liguria, but um, they're, they're made in, uh, I'll think for a second, but anyway, it's thinly stretched, blobbed with this cheese, baked in the oven, immediately comes out, finished with olive oil, salt, cut up, and, and served. And when Ruth Reichel first had it, and she's the only person that ever said the same thing that I was thinking, it tastes like matzo and butter. Yeah, it, it is really good. You know, it's completely simple, plain, and that's kind of that feeling, if you like matzo and butter. I love matzo and butter. Yeah, well, I, you know, I hadn't even thought about that combo, but uh, what, what kind of blew our minds was my wife and I went there. We, we, we tried to go to Manuelina, right? It was our one day that we yeah. had a chance to take the train from Genoa down to uh, Recco. And, uh, and it's kind of on the coast. And like you said, we had to walk about a mile from the train where the train led us off to get to the restaurant. And it, it was closed. It was the one day of the week that yeah. they were closed. And there was somebody there and they said, sorry, sorry. And I told them what we had come. And they said, well, there's another place around the corner. And they sent us to the, I guess, maybe the second. It's kind of like Frank Pepe's and Sally's yeah. in New England. It's like the other, the other place that did it. And it, was, uh, and it was run by these twin brothers, uh, Primo and Secundo. <laughs> you remember? <yeah. laughs> I felt like I was in, you know, Big Mac, and and they had a wonderful restaurant. And we told them about why we were there and everything. And they took us back in the kitchen and walked us through the whole process. But and they said, okay, sit down. We're going to bring you some food. And they they brought out a pan. It was like this big. Uh, and we looked at each other. And said, There's no way we can eat this whole thing. And he says, Don't worry. The other half is for the people at the table next to you. Yeah. But after we had eaten our half, we went. No, we went the whole thing. It was so <laughs> light. It was so. It went down so easy. And and yeah. because the dough was so thin. It really didn't, it didn't fill you up that much. It just kept no. creating a craving for more. And, you know, you can buy those pans online on Amazon. 
Yeah? And yeah. Just, are they called, what do they call them? Do they have a special name or are they just called focaccia? I can, go look, I can go look it up for you. <laughs> well, we'll let the folks who are watching <laughs> or we'll post it if we, ever, if we can get the actual name. Because I know after today, maybe some people are going to start yeah, wanting to make it or some restaurants no, will start adding time. Absolutely. I'll give you the link to where you can get these copper pans. And you really need them because the way that the, the pan conducts the heat, yeah. obviously, the, the, the material, but also the shape of it. So it's not like a pie. You can't do it in a pie tin with high sides. You know, it just has to be just a gently so, sloping like one inch, you know, like not even an inch height. So I'll, I'll give you know what I did. My, my hack for that at home was to take a regular pizza pan, like the kind of yeah. pizza pans you see at pizzerias, right. which only slope a little bit up, and then you crimp it all the way around the sides. Yeah. Not the exact same thing that they did, but it's a beautiful, and, and once you figure out how to make the dough, it's all not, not that hard if you can get no. some soft, fresh cheese like Crescenza or, right. or uh, uh, what, what's, what's the one you were describing that they use? Strachino. Strachino, yeah, which is yeah. Good. Sometimes you can see it, but it, it, yeah. the time, if, it, yeah. if it's coming from Italy, it's not fresh anymore. You know? right. <laughs> so no, actually, there's a local maker that makes it for us. That's He's the way to do it. Yeah, mozzarella maker, but they he it is sold sold commercially under Crescenza. Yeah, and even uh, Belgioso, which is a large company. That's who I'm talking that, about. And I've used yeah. that to make it when I'm when I'm when we have people over, I make that as sort of an appetizer course. So, for well, we have another we have another link, another commonality. <laughs> yeah, and 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 here's the thing: when I when I, I mean I wrote that book 17 years ago. I know, uh, isn't that crazy? Ago, and I thought I thought it's only a matter of time before it starts exploding around the United States. I'm so excited to hear that somebody finally took it and ran with it and is making yeah, it happen. We, you know, um, I'll tell you a couple of people that are doing it, like Michael Tusk up at um, Catonia in San Francisco. He loves it, and so he does it also there. And um, uh, uh, Justin um, at um, Upland in New York, he was doing it. But you're starting to see it a little bit, you know? Well, I'm telling you, when everybody hears that you're doing it, Oh, okay. They're all going to want to do it. I got to tell you. you know. Well, I got to tell you, the recipe is like, you know, foolproof. And like I said, anybody can go on YouTube because it's there and it shows you exactly how to make it. Um, but you, well, you all heard it here. And again, yeah. you have YouTube because, yeah, if you haven't had it, which most of you probably haven't, uh, you're going to have to either make it or take a trek to someplace that it's doing it. Yeah. Right. Well, that's that's cool. So you So that's a whole new branch of the you know, of the various restaurants that you've done. Yes. And, and when I saw you two years ago, and that's the last time I saw you, was at Pizza Expo. And we did a panel right. together. And you had mentioned that you were getting ready to open a Roman-style pizzeria. Yes. Did that open? So, and, and is it happening? It's opening, and it's doing great. And I'll tell you just about it, because I don't like to assume all the credit when I uh, do not deserve it. So um, the, the principal owner... Uh, and chef is Matt Molina, who used to be our chef at uh, Pizzeria Mozza and Osteria Mozza. And before that, he was a line cook at Campanile. Campanile. So he's been with you for a long time. And we introduced mm -hmm. Matt to our followers through the videos that we shot, uh, the webisodes at Mozza when we Perfect. were there eight years ago. And he was kind of your chef de cuisine at, at Pizzeria Mozza at the time. Yeah, we so full, full circle. Um, he was ready to branch out on his own. Uh, he found a space with along with partners uh, where they were going to have a small little osteria, which they have. Uh, uh, and um, and uh, with that, there was a space for a takeout pizzeria. So, and so he wanted to do something and he wanted my help. And I said, okay, look at Matt, I'll be, I'd love to help you work on the concept. Um, I don't think right now Los Angeles needs another Moza style pizzeria with me there because what would I do different? Although I do have a new concept. I just thought of it, which I have to tell you about. But anyway, right. oh, wow, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, hear that too. So, yeah, but. so, you know, the, the, the idea for this, uh, for this, um, uh, for it's called triple beam, by the way. And the, the right. beam comes from the old fashioned way of weighing things where it has the beam, right? And you weigh because this pizza is, Rather than um, sold by the by the pie, it's sold by the slice. Not the slice, but again the, the piece, um, and it's weighed. 
but so the, you know the 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 beginnings of the conversation with Matt started five years ago. The restaurant's only a year old, so I have to say, just like you're talking about writing about um, uh, Focaccio di Recco seventeen years ago, I'm not talking seventeen years ago, but I am talking about before. I knew of any Roman style pizza in the uh, United States. And I think that's the new craze, which is a style of pizza that not only a lot of people are doing it by the slice and weighed, and it's pizza all'Italia, but it's also the style of, of the pizza where the crust um, is kind of um, baked, yeah. very light aerated, um, a little bit thicker than a, a, a thin pizza, right? Uh, but it, it is topped afterwards and goes back in the oven. And right. I've been going to, and I know you've gone to um, the Forno on the Campo di Fiore, oh, where that, that beautiful Pizza Bianca, uh, both topped, and then they also make it into sandwiches. And um, that's what Triple Bean is. Um, I don't run it. Matt runs it. I just helped him develop the style and the recipe and the idea. But now I gotta say, if I had to say what, if you were to say, look into the crystal ball and what do you see? We see Roman. style pizza, we see Detroit style pizza, you know, we see the yeah. next phase of what we were doing with just our personal style of round traditional pizza that wasn't necessarily Neapolitan, so. Right, right. It's it's amazing how many different iterations pizza can have and how great yeah. it can be when it's done well. And I think that the Roman pizza has kind of burst on the scene. Uh, when we, when I saw you two years ago, did you get a chance to go to the booth at Pizza Expo from the, the folks from the Roman Pizza Academy that were displaying all of their various pizzas? Who was baking at it? I may have. Massimiliano Saiva. Yes. And, and, and we're gonna have them on, on Pizza Talk too. Excellent. Massimiliano and his partner, Alex uh, Monzo, they're going to come and talk about that. I was blown away by that, and I and I haven't been to Rome since since Bonchi opened his, so I haven't been to Pizzarium. So yeah. I don't know. That's kind of considered sort of the gold standard. That's the yeah. manual of Roman style, but but that's and his is a lot. His is a lot thicker, Bonchi, and he's doing that in Chicago, and he's opening up in New York. He's got I think two places in Chicago. Right. I think going to New York. The one it, at the um, in, uh, that's owned by the Roscioli family in the Piazza Campo di Fiore in Rome yeah. is much thinner, but it's not crispy like a cracker. You know, it yeah. still has the dough structure, yes. but it's a lot thinner. So I say um, uh, bon cheese is much more almost focaccia. Exactly. Yeah, I think of it as a focaccia variation, or what would be associated with focaccia. Yeah, yeah and, great and, and now people are calling it um, pinchy. That's yeah. That's another one. Pinchy. Which yeah. I think is still Roman style. I mean, it's still the same. Um, it's still the same thing where the dough is baked. It's a light dough, right? Um, but it's very light and airy. It goes super back airy. in, right? So super airy. And, and Sometimes I, think, I get I get confused by all these names and well, that's it. And I was wondering about that name too. Was, you know, a name can mean something in Italy, and then by the time it gets to the United States, it takes on the name, the meaning of whatever we give it. So somebody will say, "Oh, it's it's pizza style pizza," and it may not be anything like what you would see in in Italy or Rome. But uh, I was told that what that term meant was the shape. It's almost more of an oval shape. Yeah. It refers to this. It's basically a, a oval version. Of, of that. Pizza. Yeah. 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 So that's, you know, I mean, they're all the same. Like there's a, you might want to talk to this guy in Los Angeles. Um, he has a pizzeria called Apollinaire. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I met him, you know, every year as part of um, a LA food festival, they have a pizza segment, right? And they have, I don't know, 20 vendors and some panels and things like that. Um, and last year, a little adorable girl came up to me and said, would you try my daddy's pizza? I'm like, sure. Oh, gosh. To me, right? Best marketing tool in the world. <laughs> right, cute. And she brings me this, this um, focaccia-looking pizza. And sometimes that's not what I want, the breadiness of it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, sure. So I taste it. It was so delicious, as light as could be. I went and met her father. 
And he tells me, and this is the first time I ever heard of it, Detroit style pizza. He called it Detroit style. Okay. Yeah, so it has the cheese on the outside and it's baked in a sheet pan, but his is so light as if I never had Detroit style pizza. So what's the difference between this Detroit style pizza, Chicago deep dish, focaccia, the bon cheese? I mean, is, is it all the same? I have no idea, right? It's all the same. That's one of the reasons why we have, we're doing pizza talk is to really explore yeah. all of these, these styles now that have exploded on the scene and do have, they take on different meaning in different parts of the country. Uh, Detroit style is no longer owned by Detroit. It's been around for 65, 70 years and now all of a sudden it's become the hot overnight you success. No, I mean, this guy's is delicious. His name is Justin and he's from Apollinaire. I would talk to him, I love we'll him. Down. Maybe we can get him on. Yeah, and, because boy. Yeah, there's a lot it, going on. When it's done well, it's, I mean, it is my favorite current style right now. And, and the last book that I did, uh, Perfect oh, wow. Pizza, it was really built around my version of a Detroit style pizza. I, I added my own little twist to it. And I'm, I'm pretty, pretty jazzed about it because it, it brings together the best part of focaccia and pizza for me, which is a, a wonderful <laughs> undercrust with kind of a, a, a buttery, uh, you must talk to him then. Yeah. You know, again, I've never had it before, so maybe maybe what I'm having is not a great version. I think it's still. I mean, well, I'll, probably is. But uh, when I when I can get on a plane again, when that happens, I, I'm yeah. you know, LA is on my. I've got to get back because there's so many things that have happened since I was last there. So you want to so, hear about my new concept? I, I want to hear, but why don't we why don't we save that for the next second? Because we've okay. we've about, just about run out of time here. But oh. what we're going to do is invite everyone to join us for part two with Nancy okay. Silverman so we can play more catch up. We've been catching up a little bit on the last 10 years. Uh, I want to go back even before then and talk a little bit about sort of, again, your culinary roots, a little bit of the history, but then sure. let's talk about the future of not only the future of pizza, but the future of Nancy Silverton and where you see things going. So, great. Uh, so great. We'll be back in the next episode. I'm Peter Reinhardt with Nancy Silverton today on Pizza Talk. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next episode.